Hey everybody, Z Garcia here, and today we are taking a look at the second expansion to Seven Wonders Duel, the brand new Seven Wonders Duel, Agora. In Agora here, we are going into the Senate. We are going to be attempting to spread our influence in the different chambers of the Senate, trying to achieve little bonuses for ourselves along the way, and also possibly rest away control of the entire game from our opponents in a brand new way to win the game prematurely. Don't even have to count points. I might just be able to win the game outright. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the expansion. I will not be showing you how to play Seven Wonders Duel, the base game. Uh, if you need to do that, go check out our video for that, of course. But then once you've got that done, come on back here. I'm going to show you what comes in this box, how it incorporates itself into the core game, and then I'll tell you what I think of it. So here we're taking a look at what the expansion contains. I'm going to show you how to set this up and then what it all adds to the core experience. All right. So we've got this extra board down here, the center. We're going to attach that below the central board. We're also going to shuffle up these decree tokens and put one at each. Some go face up. They let you know that. Some go face down. We're also replacing these tokens with a new set that has to do with the influence that will be exerted at these locations. Each player gets a set of tokens to represent that influence. We're also going to shuffle in a couple of new wonders and a couple of new uh, progress tokens. And then we've got two decks over here, two new decks of cards. These are going to be added to each age. We're going to shuffle these up and we're going to add five to each age. The backs are different, so you will know if these are coming up. And then the fronts showcase two kinds of cards. I'll talk about these in just a sec. And then we've got this deck over here, which are extremely powerful cards you might bring to bear, but they take uh, quite a bit of prep to get them ready to go off. These are sort of shady deals and manipulations you might be able to pull off. We've also got a scoring pad that shows you the new things you will uh, score for in the game. So what is going on in this expansion? Well, you are going to be exerting your influence down here in the Senate by triggering these new cards, putting out your cubes in these locations, and then controlling these bonuses. If you have more control in a location than I do, then you are going to put one of your cubes down here, and you are going to have a special ability. That section is also worth some victory points at the end of the game. Three points, two points, and then one point out here. Uh, and if you control all six at any given moment, that's a new end game trigger. You win the game immediately if you do that. So now there are three ways for the game to end prematurely, right? It could be a military win, a science win, or you could have this Senate victory happen as well. So let me explain some other concepts. All right, let's, uh, let's say we've already set up the first age. We've got uh, the players taking a couple of turns. And then these cards come up. Like I said, there are two kinds. When you choose to take one of these cards, you have the same three options you always do with any of the cards. You can throw it away for money. You can build a monument with it by tucking it underneath the wonder. Or you can build it. The cost for these will always be the same. It's gold. It shows an S in there uh, for these senators. And you're always going to pay in gold as many as you already have senators. Meaning the first one's free, second one costs you one, and so on. When you take one, there are again two different kinds. When you take one of these, you are going to get a number of senate actions equal to... Well, equal to this scale, what this scale lets you know. This is based on the blue cards you've already acquired. And if you have zero or one blue cards, you get a single activation. Two to three blue cards, you get two activations. And four or more blue cards in your display, you're going to get three activations. Now, what do I mean by activations? Well, one of two things, okay? This one, you'll notice, shows us a segment of this Senate down here. And each of those activations I'm talking about led me either add a cube to a section that falls within the range, meaning one of these two, or I can move a cube anywhere 
to an adjacent location. So I can move this cube from here to there. Let's say, for example, this looks like so. And I've already taken a few turns, and I get two activations with this. Great. My first activation is going to go here, which means I am now controlling that area. I'll put it there, and I will reveal this. Also, this would have been revealed. And then for my second activation, I'm going to move this one here, meaning now we're tied and no one controls it. So we'll pull the cube back. That's what that means. This kind of card, the conspirators, don't work the same way. You have one of two actions you can take. This doesn't care about how many blue cards are in your display. You get to either add a cube anywhere you want, doesn't matter where, I can just add one, I'll add one there, which means now I take control of that. Or I can choose to use these cards over here. I would draw two, and I would pick one, keep it, and either put the other one back on top or on the bottom of this pile. I'm going to put this card face down in front of me, okay? And it'll stay there. Now, later on in the game, as I draft a card, any kind of card, I could choose to not do anything with it and instead put it underneath this one and prepare this card. Like I said, these are very difficult, okay? Once, I've, once it's prepped and ready to go like this, then in an upcoming turn, before my regular action, I can choose to trigger this. I would just discard this one, flip this over, hit my opponent with that, and then take my normal turn. And they are normally very strong. This one is going to break one of your opponent's blue cards, and then you get to move a cube out here somewhere. Don't forget, if you get all six, you win the game automatically, which is very possible. All right, so that's what these do. They are usually very powerful, very splashy powers, but yes, they take quite a bit to ready. You have to draw them, and then you have to sort of power them up and get them ready to go. They're a nice trap, though, sitting on the table waiting to go off. So that's how these work. They're all going to be the same, though. Of course, the uh, they'll show different areas of the Senate. As you can see there, the central area, the right or the left, okay? So there is that. And um, as you are moving the uh, military influence one way or the other, uh, once you hit this location, if you uh, push that onto your opponent, you'll get to add a cube. This one lets you break an opponent's cube and then move one of your own. Same thing on the other side, of course. Uh, and that's basically it. Now, what are these and the wonders and these two new ones over here? Let's talk about that, shall we? Let's start with these progress tokens. This one, if you have it, when you draw these cards, you'll keep both. You can keep both in front of you. You don't have to put one back. This one over here, you no longer need to pay the cost for these senators. Again, the cost is how many you already had. Now they are free. So extremely powerful, especially if you are targeting them. Uh, and then we've got the two wonders over here. When you do this, very simple. Add a cube, move one. It also lets you start with one on the board somewhere. And then this lets you uh, trigger one of your special cards without prepping it, one of these. And then also you begin with one already. Okay, six coins, go again. So very good. And they also do a little something right before you even start if you draft these which is neat. That's a new concept completely. Now, these tokens down here, what do they do? Well, they're, they're little powers on top of anything else going on. This one's very simple. One military. You have to make sure you're keeping track of that one. If you lose it, go back, so on. This one over here, when you throw away a card for money, if you control this area, you get two more coins than you normally would. Very good. This one over here, you benefit from chains, uh, from being able to build using a, a chain, whether that card is in your display or your opponent's. So I can use their symbols to build myself. Great. We've got uh, this one over here is uh, one I have to look up. I don't remember off the top of my head. So this gives me a chance to take a look at the rule book. Let's take a look at the rule book. Here we've got all of the powers that you're likely to find in these down here. And then we are going to take a look at that one, which is there. When, uh, let's see, yeah, when recruiting a conspirator, you immediately play another turn. So the conspirators are these. If you recruit this, you go again. Very good. Definitely a corner case. 
uh, a discount on yellow cards, all sorts of things, okay? So there you go, those are all the things you're likely to see. And then over here, the really, really powerful ones on these cards. All right, there you go. Lots of manipulation, lots of, uh, you know, the, the intricacies of the Senate, the backstabbing, the small sort of subtle movements of how you can uh, wrest away power from someone or control from someone. I think this replicates that in an interesting way. Uh, so let's go ahead and go back up top. Let me give you some final thoughts on this expansion. That's Seven Wonders Duel Agora. Now, this is already the second expansion for the game. Before that, we had this one here, Pantheon, which I thought was incredible. This elevated the original game, and I already thought that was insanely good. So this one, in my opinion, which I did a review of, by the way, in my opinion, is a must-have, the first one. Is the new one a must-have? Um, that's a little bit harder to decide, largely because the first one exists. If this did not exist, then yes, I would say you need this. This is very good. It's going to give you a lot of new concepts, things to think about, new abilities, pressure points to mess with your opponent, right? The first one, though... Is so good, breaks up the cadence of the game, gives you big splashy powers that this one doesn't quite do that. This is this sort of has a different uh, tactic of attack. It's about subtle moves, smaller turns, fewer sort of um, you know more things, but smaller things along the way. If that makes sense, this is about a few broad strokes, right? Let's go ahead and talk about it, shall we? Uh, I'm going to start with the one drawback I have. And again, I'm only saying that this is lesser than because I'm comparing it to a couple of, you know, titanic designs here, I would say, okay? The main thing that pulls it back for me is the ease of play. I think there are now a lot of little things to keep track of in this expansion, okay? A lot of little rules that this introduces. And I did find that to be... Um, not overwhelming, but just a, quite a bit to keep track of. The game, I think with this expansion in it, does lose a little clarity. You know, it's, it's always been a design that is so simple. Cuts right to the quick. Draw a card. Do one of three things with it. Done. Don't make a mistake. Don't reveal a card when you shouldn't. You know, don't give your opponent the opportunity to use a card you left behind to stab you with it. This now, there's a ton going on. Tons of little things where you control, you know, what, where, what chamber you control and what it does and why. And, uh, you know, if you want one of those big nasty cards, you got to take it and then prep it and then fire it at the right time. So lots going on in there. So the ease of play, I think, suffers. Everything else? Yeah, it's good. So start right at the top. Theme, the intrigue, the senate. The subterfuge, all those things that are happening in this one were just simply not in this one. This was, like I said, about big, splashy, crazy turns. Now, this one, this had one thing that the new one doesn't do that I thought was incredibly good. And that is, you could take a turn in this expansion that did not have anything to do with taking a card from the display. That's great, because that broke up the cadence. I could math out which card would be mine before this expansion. With this in play, I no longer could do that. This, you might be able to do something like that, but it's way more subtle, right? So, but the theme is fantastic. The aesthetics, of course, they're very good. Except for those cubes. I think those copper and silver cubes are honestly terrible. They are peeling. They came with a bunch of broken pieces in the bag they came in. And as I did the overview on the table... As I just, I mean, rolled them out of their bag. They were, they had left pieces behind. They are falling apart. They are terrible cubes, okay? Is that enough to bring this down to a neutral score instead of a positive? I thought about it, I'll tell you. But no, everything else is good. The board is nice. The cards are lovely. Everything else is great, okay? So that's why I didn't do it. But those cubes, woof. They're bad. Replay value. 
insanely good. So many little things that could that could go differently now. You will keep coming back to this expansion. The game arc is that new way to win. Like I said, that's good. And at first I thought that wouldn't happen, but it can definitely happen. The just sort of, you know, the, the, the little bonuses everywhere and anything, you know, all the little sort of pressure points is the best way I can put it. The new pressure points to watch out for or to utilize on your opponent. Those are great. Um, lastly, tactics, luck, strategy. Yes, yes. There's a bunch of new, you know, a bunch of new stuff. So, there you go. Now, this, for me, this, this, I rate 10. 10 out of 10 for both of those. This new one, being second, being a little fiddlier, being, um, a little too much, especially if you combine them, this is going to get from me... An 8.5 out of 10. That's still good. That's still a seal of excellence. But yes, I would get it last between the two expansions. And yes, I would get it if you are an absolute fan of the game, which I am. And I would say, you know, nothing wrong here. Lots of content. Interesting, subtle, engaging. But get it after the other one, okay? Uh, and be careful if you're playing both at the same time because this is no longer a small game at that point. There's a lot going on. So there it is, 8.5 out of 10 for Agora, wonderful. I don't know how these designers managed to get two intricate expansions into this little card game, but they did it, which is amazing. So there you go. That's it for me, everybody. My name is Z Garcia, and I'm going to see you on the next one. Bye-bye.